<laughs> in 2019, I got the chance to try 11 different cowboy boots over an extended period of time. So today, I'm gonna rank them from the worst to the best. Let's get into it. Whoa! <laughs> Hey everybody, my name is Jeremiah Craig and 2019 has been a spectacular year for trying different cowboy boots. Now, if you've been following my channel all year, you know that I get the chance to try cowboy boots over an extended period of time, which helps me learn more about the quality of the boots and gives me a better impression and review and opinion to give to you. So that's what this video is gonna be about today. I'm gonna to be just focusing on the boots that I spent the most time with in 2019 and ranking them from the worst to the best. Starting out at number 11 and my least favorite boot of 2019 is the Dan Post Thin Red Line. The biggest thing that I didn't like about this boot was the insole system. It has the soft strike insole technology that Dan Post has created and really, it just shredded in a couple of months and it flattened out before that. So once I put my foot in this boot for the first time, it was actually really comfortable. But as the boot broke in and that insole saw wear, it just didn't handle it very well at all. I was really disappointed with the Dan Post soft strike insole that they have in this thin red line. Now, they have made improvements to the insole since then, which we will get into later in this video. But in the thin red line, that gray soft strike insole is pure crap. I moved across country in this boot and I did some construction work in it over the summer as well. And I'm really not happy with how the heel is holding up either. I found some cracks in it and I can see it already separating from the outsole. So all in all, this is my biggest disappointment of 2019. However, I do really like the cause that they have made this boot around. Every sale of the Dan Post Thin Red Line, a proceeds goes to the National Firemen's Association. So this Thin Red Line is a great cause, but unfortunately it just doesn't come through as a working boot. So I have to give this boot an award of the best associated cause for 2019, but in every other respect, it is kind of a disappointment. Coming in at number 10 is the Ariat Plano Square Toe Cowboy Boot. Now, this is a very comfortable boot. The insole system is much better than the Dan Post Thin Red Lines. It is an ATS Pro. Now, ATS Pro isn't my favorite insole from Ariat. I like the 4LR, but it is still a comfortable insole and it holds up very well. It's not shredding at all. It looks brand new still. So I like the fact that this has an insole that holds up. However, this boot is very, very stiff. It has taken me about five weeks to get it to a point where it's actually comfortable to wear. The break-in process is arduous and it feels like it's taken forever because it is just so hard to break in. A minute feels like an hour sometimes in these boots, but if you stay with it, it does get to that comfortable level where you can just grab it and go. Right now, these are my go-to shit kickers. So it's a nice boot to put on, go, do what you need to do, and then take off once you get it broke in. But like I said, it is a very long process. I do wanna give this boot an award for the best weight distribution. It is very well balanced. Even though it is about the same weight as a leather outsole, it feels completely different than a leather outsole cowboy boot does while on your feet, just because the heel is so much lighter than what a leather stacked heel would be. So this feels really light, even though it is about the same weight as a leather outsole cowboy boot. This boot by far has the best weight distribution of 2019. Number nine on this year's list is Dan Post's Diamond Pro Full Quill Cowboy Boot. I liked this boot because it made improvements on the soft strike insole system. The black soft strike insole was much better 
than the gray one. Now, they don't have a way to show the differences in between the soft strike insoles, so you have to make sure that you're getting the right one. From my experience, the gray one does not hold up as well as the black one, and they don't have serial numbers or anything like that, so that is the only way that I can distinguish the differences between these soft strike insoles. It is a very big difference. The black one is much better and performed well in the Diamond Pro boot. Now, this was a crepe sole, so it was a little bit different for me. It felt very, very good for walking around. However, it is a very blocky look, too. It's just felt like a little bit too much for me, especially since I am such a thin person. Having such a blocky square toe cowboy boot on such a thin frame just felt awkward to me. So I gave these boots to my buddy Aaron Watson, which you have seen on this channel this year. So I don't have them to show how they've performed, but in the time that I did have them for, for about two months, I liked them much better than the Dan Post Thin Red Line. But because of that crepe sole, I do want to give this boot an award for the best walking boot. It was so easy to walk around on hard pavement, even in the woods, in this boot, because the shock absorbency of that crepe polyurethane sole was so good. So, best walking boot of 2019 by far. Coming in at number eight is the Earl from Tacovas. Now I'm a huge fan of the way that Tacovas runs their business and makes cowboy boots more popular just from marketing themselves. Trying this boot was an incredible experience. I took the Earl across country on a road trip. It performed great, but it just didn't fit well. It's probably the most interesting fit that I've tried all year. The arch is just a little bit too far back for me in the 11 size. I cannot find a Tacovas that fits well, and that's what set me back on that boot. It's also just sort of generic. I mean, that's sort of Tacovas style, is that they do a very simple, sleek, minimalist boot, but I also feel like there's some personality loss there. I'm, I'm I'm torn between the brand that they're building and the generic boot that they have. Yes, it was comfortable in the time that I had it, if it was not for the arch problem that I had with it, but it's also just generic, which is why I kind of want to say that it's also a positive because it's the most universal design, and that's the award that I have for it in 2019, is that this boot pretty much goes with anything. It is a very classic design. And you can't go wrong with classic, but I also feel like you could go with classic from a lot of other companies. And from Tacovas, sometimes I just wanna see a little bit more personality in their boots. And I'm just not getting that from the Earl. So that's why it stays at number eight. It didn't fit me very well. So I let my dad try it. He's the one that ended up with the Tacovas Earl this year. Coming in at number seven is the Hondo Square Toe Rough Out 16 inch tall cowboy boot. Now this is the tallest boot that I tried this year. And let me make this clear, I love Hondo. They are the biggest surprise to me in 2019. They are a new to me brand and I love the way that they make boots. They make them traditionally, they make them with great quality and they're affordable. I think they are spectacular. The only thing that I have against these boots are just strictly personal opinion reasons. Now this boot would probably be great for a lot of you guys out there, but I just see myself going to it less and less as I keep it. This boot is so tall and it's very warm because of that. It makes the circulation in this boot just take much longer. So your feet and your legs are just gonna be warmer in this boot than in any others that I am showing here today. Which is, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just like, it's warm guys. This is a cowboy boot through and through, meant for cowboy work. So if you are a cowboy, this boot would probably be great for you but it's not great for my day today because I am not doing 
cowboy work. This is a very practical boot for the trade. And that's just why I don't see myself going to it very often. I don't hate this boot at all. Like the fact that it's at number seven is purely because I tried so many other boots that just fit better into my lifestyle. I love this boot. This gets my most traditional boot award just because it stays true to many of the cowboy aspects that boots were made for. It's tall, it has a spur ridge, it is tough as hell and made traditionally. So that's the only reason why this is at number seven. I love Hondo though. Coming in at number six is the Stetson JBS Square Toe Lizard Boot. Now this is the part of the video where I had a really tough time actually choosing and ranking the next six because I have pretty much nothing but good things to say about them all. And this was a spectacular boot. I love the colors in the shaft. The fact that it uses cording and such intricate stitching, it feels great. It's traditionally made. It's built like a tank. I mean, there's like 50 some pegs in here. It's crazy how they built this boot. Plus, the square toe looks spectacular. This is the best looking square toe that I have seen all year. It's wide, but not too wide, and it still tapers and kind of looks like a slightly wide French toe. And I absolutely love the look of this square toe, which is why I'm giving it an award for the best looking double stitch square toe of the year. Actually, just square toe period. The best square toe this year. I think this is a spectacularly looking boot that is traditionally made and feels great. They do run a little bit small. Now, they were kind of tight when I first put them on and I got an 11D. So just take that into account if you are ordering JBS Stetsons is that you might need to go a half size higher than you usually do, but maybe not. So just keep that in mind. It depends on how tight fitting your 11D or the size that you are right now is. You might need to go up an extra half a size. So I absolutely love this boot. That's why it's at number six. Coming in at number five is the Ranch Road Capistrano Cowboy Boot. Now you might be wondering why I am ranking this number five when I ranked the Tacova's number eight because this has many of the same problems that I feel like Tacova's has. It's kind of generic. I mean, it's just black. There is very little stitching in the shaft, but they are doing more personality wise than Tacova's is doing. Plus they have the hybrid outsole, which I find very intriguing and they're doing it in a, in a very different way than a lot of other cowboy boot companies are doing. Plus I have to say that the lining on this boot, the leather lining, is by far the softest that I have tried all year. Wow, when you stick your foot in this boot, you are speechless. Like I have no idea what to say. When I asked Sarah Ford about this and why this leather is so soft on the inside of this boot, all she said was that they use angel tears. Now this boot is made in Spain and it's the only boot that I have here today that is made there. So I don't know if it's some special Spanish magic that they put in this boot, but wow, this is so soft on the inside, which is why I am ranking it at number five. It's just a completely different experience that I've had from any other boot. This gets the award of best leather lined boot. Best lined boot, period. This is great. So comfortable, even though it lacks a lot of personality. So I, I, that's why I'm putting this in at number five. Coming in at number four is the Peaced Ostrich Boule Cowboy Boot. Now I absolutely love this. My great aunt Kay bought me this as a Christmas present in January. So I've had all year to mess around in this boot. The ostrich is super strong, but also super light and supple at the same time. This was a great boot for summer because it just felt so cool. The ostrich skin doesn't feel very heavy at all. Plus for an exotic, this is 
a good value. It came in at around like 280, I believe, but I think you could find them for cheaper online. And for an exotic, that is very good. Plus, I love the design of the pieced ostrich in the vamp. In fact, I'm gonna give this the award for best vamp design. I love the look of the top of this boot right here with the semi-quill ostrich leading down to the full quill ostrich wingtips. This is a good looking boot and I absolutely love to wear this around. It has taken a few water stains because I've wore it in the rain a few times, but not bad. It's held up very well and feels great too. Coming in at number three is the BNV boot, Jeremiah Craig special water buffalo calf with the J-toe. I absolutely adore this boot. It is so comfortable. I know I was very worried about it fitting correctly when I got it, but it has broken in to be one of the most comfortable boots that I have already, thanks to the B-Width, you know, and the fact that it is water buffalo calf. Like I said in that review video, it is so elastic and so soft, and it has my logo in it, so I absolutely love this boot, but I couldn't put it in the top two, just because, what are, what are you guys gonna do with that information? Great, Jeremiah likes his own boot the best. That doesn't help me out any when I'm shopping for cowboy boots. So I couldn't put this in the top two just because it doesn't help you at all. So BNV Boots, Jeremiah Craig Special is at number three. And it gets the award for softest leather. It is so soft, oh my gosh. You guys, so, so, so soft. Water buffalo calf. Don't pass it up if you get a chance. Now we're getting to the point in the video where it's like those cooking shows where it just zooms up and all you hear is like this heartbeat. Boom, 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 boom. And then they finally announce the winner. It was so difficult for me to get to this point and actually say, this is the boot that I love the most in 2019. I went back and forth. I really did, guys, because they are both great for different reasons. My second favorite boot of 2019 is the Hondo 2670 Bullhide 14 inch tall cowboy boot. Like I said before, Hondo was my biggest surprise of the year. I'm so glad that I got to try their boots. And this Hondo 2670 was an amazing boot and it continues to be so today. I love the fact that this is traditionally made. It has the hard leather insole. It has a spectacular looking red shaft and bull hide just looks spectacular with the pebbled grain, plus it's tough as hell. This is a cowboy boot through and through but it also is a good wearing around boot because it is so durable. I absolutely love this boot for the value that it is. That's why I'm giving this the award for best overall quality and value. I think that this is such an underrated boot and Hondo is an underrated company and that's why I think you should watch them in 2020. They are making efforts to get out there more and I'm so happy that they are because they make a great product. So this Hondo 2670 is my second favorite boot of 2019 and it gets the award for best overall quality and value. You can't go wrong with this boot. So if you've been keeping track and you've been following me and you've been watching all the videos like I know so many of you do, you already know what my favorite boot of 2019 is. It is the Yeehaw Cowboy Cayman Snip Toe in the black cherry color. I absolutely, oh, I'm in love with this boot. In fact, I got married in this boot, which is probably part of the reason why it's my favorite boot of the year, but it also is drop dead gorgeous. This is by far 
the best looking boot, in my opinion, that I tried all year long. Now, I know some of you will probably say that you like some other boots that I tried and you're questioning why I ranked them so low, but come on. This is a spectacular looking boot. It looks great when you wear it. You feel great when you wear it. It's a very comfortable boot. The leather lining is spectacular. The leather insole, even, even though it's a little foam, it's not a hard leather insole. It's just a comfortable boot. And you feel like you're on top of the world when you wear it. Yeehaw Cowboy did a great job designing and launching this boot this year. And I am so happy to have tried it and to have gotten married in it. And it is my favorite boot of 2019. Oh, guys, I absolutely love this boot. That's it. That's, this is my favorite boot of the year. Oh, I know this is probably gonna cause some controversy, but let me know what your favorite boot was this year. Even if you didn't try, even if I didn't try them, just let me know down in the comments and if you disagreed or you can't believe with the decisions that I made and where these boots ended up on this list. Let me know what you thought down in the comments. <laughs> this was a very hard video to make because basically I am so lucky to have been able to try so many different kinds of boots and it's all thanks to you guys. For real, thank you so much for making this possible. That's why I'm trying to do so many giveaways and I think I was able to do, let's see, one, two, three, four with the Dan Post. So I was able to do four giveaways of boots that were on this list. And that's important to me in 2020 as well. 2020 is gonna be huge, not only for cowboy boots, but also for giveaways. And I'm so excited to take you on this journey with me. And who knows what the list is gonna look like for best cowboy boots in 2020. I hope to see you there. You guys are the best. Thank you so much for supporting me in all of these in-depth reviews that I did this year, and I can't wait to do more in 2020. Peace, everybody. I'll see you next time. It's tough to rank the favorites of 2019. Yeehaw, Cowboy, and Hondo are the best that I've seen. And you may disagree with the boot of your dreams, but just remember this is just me, it's just me. <laughs> Thanks for watching today. My name is Jeremiah Craig. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe. Peace.